Mr. West's Porky Pies. Mr. West has produced a YouTube video in an attempt to debunk the conclusions of a number of laser observations. Unfortunately, Mr. West hasn't been telling the truth again. He has been dishonest in telling porcupines in order to deceive people. This video will present the science and mathematics of lasers, which will prove that Mr. West is still not being honest. The Situation Researchers such as DeMarble, Flat Earth Perth, and many others have observed laser beams over distances of 9 miles or greater. Their observations show that from over 9 miles away, the intense central axis of a laser beam can be observed by the eye, telescope, or zoom camera across a body of water. The fact that the intense central axis of a laser beam can be observed over such a distance indicates that water does not possess the supposed curvature indicated by the GLOBE model. In order to confuse and mislead, a number of YouTubers, such as Mick West, will employ word salad. What is word salad? These people will purposely throw out words such as divergence, refraction, etc., to make themselves sound authoritative and trustworthy, and to sow doubt in the minds of anyone who does not have a solid understanding of these principles and concepts. The way to test if a person is talking word salad and can't be trusted is to request their empirical evidence, recorded and date and time stamped observations and measurements. You will not receive empirical evidence because they do not have any. Instead, you will receive an email containing one or more of the following. Obfuscation, deflection, more word salad, direction to a quote-unquote model. On not receiving the person's personal empirical evidence and instead receiving one or more of the above, you will immediately know the person is disingenuous and out to deceive you. This is the acid test of honesty. Mr. West does not believe that the observer sees the intense central axis of a laser beam because light from the laser is traveling in a straight line from the laser to the observer. In an attempt to debunk our and other observations and deceive his audience, Mr. West proves himself dishonest, debunks himself, and proves his 2D make-believe model to be a sham. Again. Mr. West employs word salad and sideshow tricks in an attempt to convince you that the observer sees the intense light of the central laser axis because light curves around the Earth at exactly the correct angle to be seen. But his naughty lies have no evidence to back them up, so are easily uncovered and the truth exposed. Let's get to Mr. West's tricks in word salad. In his video, Mr. West states, quote, the laser is bending around the curve of the Earth due to refraction. End quote. Now, that's quite a statement. Anyone making such a statement and is to be taken serious must have a wealth of empirical evidence to support such a statement. Otherwise, it's pure word salad and dishonest. So, you would expect Mr. West to back up his statement with a host of empirical evidence, namely time and date stamped personal observations and measurements. No empirical evidence is presented to back this considerable claim. But he does use his own made-up 2D make-believe computer model to show you what he wants you to see. He doesn't tell you that his model isn't based on empirical evidence. He doesn't tell you the assumptions his model is based on. Dishonest. More of Mr. West's word salad. Next in the video, Mr. West states, quote, or it, light, will be bending downward, which is what happens normally as lower air is generally denser than higher air." End quote. Once again, that's quite a statement. So to support it, he would of course present a collection of recorded date and time stamped water and air temperature readings and relative humidity readings taken at a variety of locations around the world at a range of set heights and specific time intervals throughout the day and night and the four seasons of the year. Again. No empirical evidence is presented to back this considerable claim. But he does 
use his own made-up 2D make-believe computer model to show you what he wants you to see. He doesn't tell you that his model isn't based on empirical evidence. He doesn't tell you the assumptions his model is based on. Dishonest. Mr. West goes on to state, quote, This downwards bending is amplified if the lower air is cooler, like if the water is cooler than the air, which is normally the case during the day and in the evening. In this case, with the light bending down towards cooler, denser air, the refraction can bend the light around the curve so you can see the light from a laser that would normally be hidden." End quote. Once again, no empirical evidence is presented to back the claim, but he does use his own made-up 2D make-believe computer model to show you what he wants you to see. He doesn't tell you that his model isn't based on empirical evidence, and he doesn't tell you the assumptions his model is based on. Dishonest. The picture is becoming patently clear. Mr. West is telling tall tales. Mr. West purchased a laser so he could shine it through a fish tank of sugar water in his previous sideshow trick in order to try and deceive unsuspecting people. Fortunately, his wizardry was found out and proven scientifically incorrect and not possible. Please see this video's description for this link. So, why hasn't he taken his laser outside? to obtain empirical observations and stunning photographs to support the claims he has been making. That is obviously the logical and scientific thing to do. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Dishonest. And more from Mr. West. Quote, we've seen time again that lasers are often visible over water when geometrically they should be hidden behind the curve, so there should be no surprise. What's actually going on when you see a laser when you think you shouldn't? Well, there's two things to consider, refraction and beam divergence, end quote. The term beam divergence has been used, so a detailed explanation of divergence, what causes it and what happens to a diverging beam as it travels over miles of distance should follow to enable the viewer to understand and apply the concept to the situation being presented. No explanation, no calculations, but you do get to see a technical image copied and pasted from Google Images like it must mean something scientific and authoritative. Dishonest. Mr. West then takes you to his own made-up 2D make-believe computer model to lie to you with his sideshow trick. He doesn't tell you that his model isn't based on empirical evidence. He doesn't tell you the assumptions his model is based on. He states, quote, the top of the laser beam could be going way over the camera, but the bottom of the laser beam just is just touching and has managed to make it around the curve of the Earth. So the divergence of the laser beam has actually has quite a significant effect, and that makes it very easy to see the beam that kind of, no matter what direction you are pointing it in, like up or down, because there's always going to be some light path which goes just over the curve of the Earth, end quote. In simple terms, Mr. West is trying to convince anyone naive enough that the laser beam diverges, and as it diverges, it refracts, bends, around the supposed curvature. And according to Mr. West, quote, or it, light, will be bending downward, which is what happens normally, as lower air is generally denser than higher air, end quote. Mr. West bending diverging light show. His model shows it, so it must be true. What Mr. West is presenting is utter nonsense. It is unscientific and not based on empirical evidence. Mr. West is an enthusiastic liar, but not a good one. Frankly, it is embarrassing. Mr. West shows you this picture copied and pasted from Google Images, and he believes you will now think he must know what he is talking about, and he is authoritative and trustworthy. As a person that is a critical thinker and has a PhD in spectrophotometry, I cannot allow Mr. West to use his nonsense, unsupported theories, and ridiculous model to lie about the conclusions from laser observations, and more importantly, blatantly lie to and deceive people about the behavior of light in the real world. His words and model show his dishonesty. First, let's deal with reality and not what goes on in Mr. West's head. Look at these photographs and any photographs and videos on Google and see for yourself if you can see a laser beam bending downwards over the earth. Remember, Mr. West states that this is what happens normally in the day and evening. Strange, Mr. West's normal doesn't match with normal everyday reality. 
Mr. West is either telling lies or lives in a different reality than you and I. Please check all the photographs on the internet of lasers, laser light shows over water and land. Every day, real life compared to Mr. West's made up, nonsense, make believe model. Thank goodness we live in reality. Let's go through lasers and divergence and do this properly, clear and transparent, with no sideshow tricks. No nonsense, no lies, just the known, proved, and accepted science and technology of lasers. Much of this knowledge was presented on a previous video, but for a thorough understanding that will allow the reader to be able to see through Mr. West's lies, it is essential to have it available. How does a laser work? There are a number of YouTube videos that present how a laser works. Some of the videos are more in-depth and accurate than others, depending on the level of understanding required. These links will be in the video description. What is beam divergence? The beam divergence of an electromagnetic beam is an angular measure of the increase in beam diameter or radius with distance from the optical aperture or antenna aperture from which the electromagnetic beam emerges. Most lasers used in pointers and light shows emit beams with a Gaussian profile or distribution. A Gaussian distribution, also known as normal distribution, is a bell-shaped curve. This means that the laser beams are brightest in the center and the intensity falls off towards the edges. Why does a laser beam diverge? Below is only a very simplified description of why beam divergence occurs, but it is adequate in the context the observations being done with lasers. An ideal or perfect laser does not exist. An ideal laser would emit light in only one specific direction. For example, 90 degrees relative to the light generating mechanism, so no beam divergence would occur. In real life lasers, the light is being emitted in a range of directions relative to the light generating mechanism. Due to the size of the light compared to the physical size of the light generation mechanism and lenses, a proportion of the light generated will be able to leave the final lens at a non 90 degree angle, causing a beam to be generated that diverges that is, not just travel in one specific direction. How is beam divergence calculated? The beam divergence of a laser beam is a measure for how fast the beam expands outward from the beam waste. Like all electromagnetic beams, lasers are subject to divergence, which is measured in milliradians, MRADs, or degrees. The divergence of a laser beam can be calculated if the beam diameter D1 and D2 at two separate distances, such as Z1 and Z2 along the laser axis, are known. If the increase in beam diameter between two points is measured and the distance between the two points is also known, then a mathematical calculation can be applied to work out the angle of divergence, which is measured in milliradians or MRADs. Once the angle of divergence is known, the divergence of the beam at any distance can be calculated. Example, a laser has a beam divergence of 1.5 MRADs or 0 0.086 degrees. This means for every one meter of travel, the, the beam diverges by 1.5 millimeters. What is the radius of the beam at 1,000 meters? Calculate by 1,000 uh, times tangent times 0 0.086 and you, that equals 1.5 meters, making the diameter 3 meters. Calculate the beam at 100 meters has a radius from the center of the beam of 1.5 meters and a diameter of 3 meters. A simple plug in the numbers beam divergence calculator can be found at the following link, which will be in this video's description. Example 10,000 milliwatt 520 nanometer green laser 303 model. Using the divergence calculator here and double checking the mass using the tan function, at 15,300 meters, the beam diameter is 22.95 meters and the radius is 11.48 meters. At 15,300 meters, the beam area is 413.74 square meters. Again, the area equals pi r squared. Summary A laser beam diverges. 2. The divergence of a laser beam can be calculated. 3. The radius, diameter, and surface area of the diverged beam can be calculated at a specific distance. 
All of the facts and knowledge here is readily available in books and on the internet and can be checked up. Please check it up. Do not take my word for it. How do we see a laser? A laser can be seen in two ways, either directly or indirectly. Directly. Any observer in the cone and looking toward the laser device will directly see the laser source. The ability to see the laser light directly also depends on distance and weather conditions, etc. Indirectly. A laser beam can be seen indirectly by the process of scattering. Scattering is different from reflection. With reflection, light, radiation, is deflected in one direction. Some particles and molecules found in the atmosphere have the ability to scatter solar radiation in all directions. Selective scattering, or Rayleigh scattering, occurs when certain particles are more effective at scattering a particle wavelength of light. Air molecules, like oxygen and nitrogen, for example, are small in size and thus more effective at scattering shorter wavelengths of light, blue and violet. Another type of scattering, called Mi scattering, is responsible for the white appearance of clouds. Cloud droplets with a diameter of 20 micrometers or, or so are large enough to scatter all visible wavelengths more or less equally. This means that almost all of the light which enters clouds will be scattered. Because all wavelengths are scattered, clouds appear to be white. How well scattered light is observed by the human eye depends upon two things. Number one, how much the light is scattered by air particles in the atmosphere. The molecules of the air scatter blue light more effectively than green light, and green light more effectively than red light. The sensitivity of the human eye to colored light is number two. The human eye is more sensitive to green light compared to red light or blue light. The diverging green laser positioned at Worthing, 15.3 kilometers away, can be clearly seen due to the fact that green light is scattered by the molecules of the atmosphere and because the human eye is sensitive to green light. If the beam of light is not traveling directly into the observer's eye, then how can the beam be seen? What exactly is scattering? Some of the green light is deflected in all directions off the air particles. One of the air particles is represented by the blue dot, not to scale. Some of the deflected green light enters the person's eye and the diverging beam is observed. Note, the light is actually scattered 360 degrees. Decrease in light intensity. As can be seen, the light intensity of the diverging beam decreases with distance from the source and with distance from the central path of the beam. This is a real life photograph. The distance is 15.3 kilometers or 9.5 miles. The laser and camera are both one meter above tide level. As can be seen, the light intensity of the diverging beam decreases with distance from the source and with distance from the central path of the beam. Is that laser beam refracting in an upward direction? Quotes from Mr. West. Or it, light, will be bending downward, which is what happens normally as lower air is generally denser than higher air. This downwards bending is amplified if the lower air is cooler, like if the water is cooler than the air, which is normally the case during the day and in the evening. Looks like Mr. West's word salad, unsupported with any empirical evidence whatsoever, doesn't match our photograph of a real-life normal observation. He has seen our images, but just ignores them because they don't fit his model. Dishonest. How can I see the torch beam if the light is actually traveling away from me? The light is being scattered in all directions off air particles and dust and some of that scattered light enters the eye. So you do not see the beam directly, you see scattered light from the beam. So it is seen indirectly. The observer in this case is not seeing the diverging laser beam directly. The light from the diverging laser beam is scattering off air particles and going to the observer's eyes. That is how the diverging beam at point X is being seen. You can appreciate that what the observer is seeing is definitely not the intense central laser source. Sorry, I know you and I know this is patently obvious, but it needs to be made crystal clear. What the observer sees at location A is not the same as this.
Let's just go through Mr. West's words again. He states, the top of the laser beam could be going way over the camera, but the bottom of the laser beam is just touching and has managed to make it around the curve of the earth. So the divergence of the laser beam has actually has quite a significant effect and that it makes it very easy to see the beam that kind of no matter what direction you are pointing it in like up or down because there is always going to be some light path which goes just over the curve of the earth end quote mr west is stating that the intense central axis of the laser can be seen because the low intensity light on the edge of the diverging beam enters the eyes of the observer. Mr. West is using his make-believe model to try and convince you that when the diverging laser beam has managed to make it around the curve of the earth and the light on the edge of the lower radius enters the observer's eye, the observer does not see low intensity scattered light as shown at X but does in fact see the intense central axis of the later that looks like this. Let's just apply logic and common sense. Obviously, the observer will not see the intense central axis of the laser because the light of the central intense axis does not enter into the observer's eyes. Mr. West's explanation and model are incorrect. It is not possible for the observer to see the intense central axis light of the laser as the device is positioned out of line of sight around the curve. How does the intensity of the laser beam decrease as it travels? Light intensity of central laser beam axis at one meter and at 15,300 meters. Those are in milliwatts per square millimeter. After traveling 9.5 miles, 15.3 kilometers, 15,300 meters, the central laser beam axis is 131,696 times less intense compared to the intensity central laser beam axis as at 0.1 meters. Due to the Gaussian profile of the laser beam at 15,300 meters, the outer edge of the diverging beam will be significantly less than the intensity of the central laser beam axis at this point, which is 0.00002417 milliwatts per square millimeter. According to Mr. West's model, what would the observer actually see? The light intensity of the central laser beam at 0.1 meters in milliwatts per square millimeter and the light intensity of the central laser beam at 15,300 meters again in milliwatts per square millimeter. The light on the edge at the bottom radius of Mr. West's refracting diverging beam will be of significantly low intensity compared to the intensity of the central laser beam axis. The intensity of the light on the edge at the bottom radius of Mr. West's refracting diverging beam will drastically decrease in intensity as it, tri as it travels a nine plus miles distance. Let's look at the figures first. Light intensity of the central laser beam at 0.1 meters and at 15,300 meters. After traveling 9.5 miles, 15.3 kilometers, 15,300 meters, the central laser beam axis is 131,696 times less intense compared to the intensity of the central laser beam axis at 0.1 meters. Due to the Gaussian profile of the laser beam at 15,300 meters, the outer edge of the diverging beam will be at significantly less intense than the central laser beam axis at this point, which is 0.00002417 milliwatts per square millimeter. If that is the drop in, in intensity of the central laser beam axis over 9.5 miles, you can appreciate that the intensity of the light on the outer edge of the bottom radius is going to be even less. Based on Mr. West's model of the observer seeing the bottom of the refracted and diverged laser beam, what would the observer actually see? Due to the Gaussian profile of a laser beam and the figures presented in the previous slide, the light intensity on the edge of the radius of diverged beam is so low that it would not be visible in the daytime. The observer will not see it. Now what about actual real life observation of the beam in the daytime? Yes, we have done it we were not able to visually observe any part of the beam at nine plus miles. 
At six miles, the observer had a visual impression of the laser. What does a visual impression mean? It means the observer stated that they could not see the laser, but caught glimpses of, of color. They could only state whether a green or red laser was being used. So according to Mr. West's model, what would the observer actually see at night? This photograph of Worthing was taken from Brighton at a distance of 9.5 miles or 15.3 kilometers. The diverging green laser can clearly be seen directly. The diverging green laser is photographed at a distance of less than 9.5 miles, 15.3 kilometers, and you can see the loss in light intensity along the central laser beam axis, as well as the loss of intensity away from the central laser beam axis. Obviously, a person 9.5 miles or 15.3 kilometers away observing the edge of the bottom of the diverging laser beam will not see this. If the observer sees anything whatsoever, it would be extremely dull if visible at all. If the person was observing the edge of the refracting diverging laser beam, this is what the observer would see. The observer would obviously not see the intense light of the central laser beam axis. Mr. West has lied in order to deceive, but his trickery has been exposed. He stated, quote, the top of the laser beam could be going way over the camera, but the bottom of the laser beam is just touching and has managed to make it around the curve of the Earth. So the divergence of the laser beam has actually has quite a significant effect and that it makes it very, very easy to see the beam that kind of no matter what direction you're pointing it in, like up or down, because there's always going to be some light path which goes just over the curve of the Earth, end quote. The known characteristics of a laser beam, their Gaussian profile and loss of intensity with distance as discussed, prove that Mr. West is talking non-scientific nonsense and his lies and attempt to deceive has been revealed for all to judge. Mr. West states that the observer sees this because the bottom of the diverging laser beam refracting around the curve enters the observer's eyes as shown below. The science of laser beams and mathematics prove that, that this is not possible and this would not be seen by an observer seeing the bottom of the refracting diverging laser beam. Summary. Mr. West has employed word salad and his own made up 2D make-believe computer model in an attempt to deceive us about how laser beams are seen over distance. Although Mr. West has a green laser, he has not presented any photographs, empirical evidence, to support his theories or his 2D make-believe computer model. Not a single photograph of a laser beam refracting and diverging around the curve. And if this is what happens normally, as Mr. West states, then where are the numerous photographs and video of this occurring? Can you guess why no visual photographic or video evidence has been presented or isn't available anywhere on the internet? The science and mathematics of laser beams prove that the intense central axis of the laser will not be seen by any observer positioned at ground level nine plus miles away over the supposed curvature. Inadvertently, this leads to the conclusion that if it is not possible for the intense central axis of the laser to be observed as it refracts and diverges around the supposed curvature, then the intense central axis of the laser is visible because the C does not exhibit curvature. These observations prove that the C does not exhibit curvature. Now, will Mr. West present photographic and video evidence to disprove the science and mathematics behind the workings of the laser beam? Or will Mr. West just ignore the science and mathematics and direct you to his model for another portion of word salad? Would you like to make a prediction? Mr. West has been a very naughty boy and is very sorry for trying to lie to you. He is relieved that this video has is, is accurately and truthfully presented the science and mathematics of laser beams. So we all now understand why the intense central axis of the laser can be observed over a nine plus mile distance. We all need to keep a watch out for any future porky pies. <laughs>